Hey there, I'm Tom Graham for Envato Tuts Plus and I'll let you in on a little secret right now. I've been editing in Premiere Pro for over half my life, which is wild. So that means when there's a major update that Adobe rolls out for Premiere Pro, I'm pretty interested to know how that's going to affect my workflow. So I've been sitting with the new update, the May 2022 update for about a month now, and I'm here to let you know about the changes, how to maybe get back some of those old familiar workspaces, what the new workflow is like, and generally what my thoughts are on it. And I'll, I'll preface this video by saying they're positive. I've sat with it for a month now and I quite like it, but I know it has divided the community. A lot of people are not so happy on the new direction that Adobe is taking with Premiere Pro. Now, this video is of course brought to you by Envato Elements, which is a super easy to use subscription-based service that gives you access to millions of digital assets that you can download and use in your projects right away. I'll talk more about it later on in the video and we'll get to talking about great video templates as well as stock footage that you can use in Premiere Pro right now. All right, let's jump into it. Let's see what's new in Premiere Pro 22. All right, so when you open the new update for Premiere Pro 2022, the May update, the splash screen is pretty much the same as you're used to. Uh, it starts to get different when you hit new project. So you will see in this new project section up here, it's basically giving you a prompt at the top left here to make a new project name, and then it will give you prompts all the way through to importing your footage. I actually think this is a really good place to start because instead of just dropping you into a project and then having to set things up, it kind of gives you prompts to start your project in the neatest way possible from the very beginning. And I think that's an important thing, especially for new editors. You've got to learn a little bit about how to, uh, how to lay out your projects for neatness, <laughs> especially when there's more collaboration tools these days. Because if you're sharing your edit with someone else, you want to make sure that it's as neat as possible, especially if someone's sharing it with you, you want to make sure you can jump into the project and know where everything is right away. So I, for one, think the import page on the new Premiere Pro update is is really good. And you can see up here, you've got import, edit, and export. So they're kind of pushing you towards this left to right linear workflow with your edit. All right, so let's start by giving this a project name. I'm going to call this what's new in Prem 22, and I'll save it in a location. So you can see here in the middle and on the left-hand side, it's giving me different options to navigate to different folders where I might want to start to bring in some media. So I've made a favorite folder already on the left-hand side here for this project, but you can do that very easily by going to any, any folder and just adding a star here and you'll see it land in your favorites over here. So we'll click into this O2 rushes and assets and you can see here, I've got a few stock videos from Envato Elements. So I'm going to hit Command 8 to select all of this stock footage here because I want to bring all of it into my project. Uh, and then on the bottom side here, you can see that there is a create button. You would hit that when you're ready to go. But before we do that, I'm going to just jump in to the import settings up here. So you've got copy media, which basically creates copies of the imported media files to a different location if you wanted to do that. I'm not going to do that for my workflow, but I am going to create a new bin. So I'll drop this down and I'll select create new bin and I'm going to call this Envato Elements. And I can also create a new sequence here as well, which is where all of this footage will go to. So I will do that to keep things nice and neat at the start. I'm going to call this what's new in prem22 underscore v01 underscore v01. Now I'm going to hit create. So as you can see here, it's dumped all of that footage into a timeline and it's given the timeline the name that I specified in the import page. And then you can see as well, it's created our bin in Vato Elements with all of our stock footage from Envato Elements. And you can see here, we've moved from left to the middle section here, moving right across this linear workflow. We've got import, edit, and export. So that's basically the three major parts of any edit. You've got bringing the media in, editing that media, and then exporting that media. So I think that workflow makes sense. So we'll sit in the edit tab for now. All right, so what is new in Prem 22 other than that import screen that we've just seen? Well, the first thing that you'll notice is that the workspace toolbar up the top here is gone, but you'll see it's above me here on the right. Now, the reason why it's here and the way it's laid out like this is not by accident. It's because I had to do this. So this is where we get into going back to a previous version and starting to bring some of that familiar uh, workspace back in to uh, Premiere Pro in this May update. If you've just updated and you're opening Premiere Pro for the first time after this May update, you will not see this up here. So I'll show you how to add this right now. First of all, you need to click on this little workspaces drop down. And you can see here, show workspace tab. If I turn it off, you'll see mine disappear. There we go. So that's what it'll look like when you first open Premiere Pro after this new update. So clicking this little workspaces drop down gives you the option to show workspace tabs. So we'll do that. Now, if I click it again, you can see here, 
I've got assembly, editing, color, audio, captions and graphics, and review. Now, I've customized that for my own linear workflow. Assembly, where you bring all of your footage in, much like we've just done on the import page, but then also this is where I can start to make rough cuts and selects of my footage. If I was doing an interview, I would do all of my selects in this section. Editing, that's where we get into a bit more granularity and I can start to really finesse the edit here. I would bring in other things like my B-roll and my graphics and any adjustment layers and music and all of that good stuff. Then color, obviously you're moving through to the color grading section here using the Lumetri color tab, which is familiar if you've used previous versions. It's just laid out slightly differently in terms of how the windows have resized themselves here. Audio, again, you'll be very familiar with this if you've uh, been working in Premiere Pro for a few years. We've just laid things out a little bit differently again, moving through to captions and graphics. And again, very similar to how you would have seen it so far. And then finally, you've got the review page, which is very similar to your assembly page, but you'll see it opens up Frame.io, which is now natively part of Adobe Premiere Pro. You don't need to add any plugins or enable anything. It is part of Adobe Premiere Pro. Adobe actually bought Frame.io, I think a few years ago, and we've seen uh, bits and pieces roll out, but this is the major push for them now to get everyone using Frame.io. So yours won't be set up like this when you first open it up. All you need to do is connect your Frame.io account, which is pretty easy. It'll give you some prompts. And if you're not already a Frame.io member, the good news is that part of your Adobe CC membership gives you now a seat on Frame.io. It actually gives you two seats, I think. So you can use all of the native integration of Frame.io without paying for an extra subscription, which I think is really cool. I've been using Frame.io on and off for years, but there has traditionally been a little bit of a barrier to entry with the price point. So it's interesting to see them push this now to Adobe Premiere Pro CC users, which is really cool. I won't dwell too much on Frame.io in this video, but maybe we'll jump into that in more detail and how we use it in our workflow here at Invato Tots Plus uh, in a future video. Let us know in the comments if that's something that you would like to see. So over on the side here, that's the end of the review tab. And then after that, I would then move up to the export tab, which we will talk about very briefly in a moment. But before we do that, I'll continue to show you how to customize these workspaces. So if I click on this workspace button again, and I can go down to here to edit workspaces. Let's click that. So you can see here, I've got my menu set up with assembly, editing, color, audio, captions, graphics, and review, like we just said. What I'm not showing is all of the other tabs there that I don't usually use, which is learning, graphics, production, effects, and metalogging, all panels and libraries. If I did wanna add one of those in, let's say for instance, I wanna add my effects one into here after audio, I'm just clicking, dragging and dropping, hitting okay. You'll see that's automatically listed up in my toolbar above here, but you can see assembly is now cut off. It's easy though. Just grab this little bar and drag it out, easy. We've basically now replicated the old version of the Workspaces toolbar. I actually think with this update, it's a little bit more customizable and I actually like where it sits in the top right of the program. It's a little bit more innocuous. The next thing over from this Workspaces tool is this new one, Quick Export. So with your timeline that you wanna do a quick export of selected, hit the Quick Export button. It will ask you to set a location for your file and also a preset for the render. Then you hit Export, easy as that. So that's what's new in the top toolbar up there. The last thing I wanna talk about is the export button over here because this is dramatically different to what you would be used to if you were doing file export media or command M to export your media in the previous version of Premiere Pro. All right, so let's hit export. And as you can see, it's dramatically different. Again, I'm very positive about this update. I actually think they've rearranged things in a really nice way that makes things way more linear when you are exporting and actually when you're working through your entire project. So let's investigate what's happening here. So you can see here on the left hand side, I've got media file targeted, but also underneath that you've got YouTube, Vimeo, Twitter, and so on. If you've got your account selected in here and linked, you can set up some presets to export for YouTube and then potentially upload directly to your YouTube channel, which is you know, it's pretty handy if that's the way you wanna work. Right now, we're just going to focus on media file here. And if you click the three little dots here, you can also rename or duplicate these as well. So if you wanted to duplicate one of these for a very specific reason, so if you wanted to have, you know, a bunch of settings that you wanted to upload for, say Google Drive or something like that, then you could do that. So this settings area is pretty standard. We've got our file name, our location for the export, the presets that we uh, want to export with, and that's, you know, we're, we're, we're pretty used to that. I'm going to keep it on match source adaptive high bitrate, and I'm going to keep it on H.264. Under this, we can toggle down the video section. And again, this is what we're looking at up here. We're matching the source of our files here. So in this case, I've got 4K 25 frames per second footage. 
If you click more down here, that gives you even more settings, those settings that you're used to in Premiere Pro already in the export page. For instance, rendering a maximum depth, using maximum render quality, which you use if you're resizing things on your timeline, uh, rendering your alpha channel only, if you wanted to do that. Uh, and then you've got some things for time interpolation and, and so on and so forth. I won't go through all of these settings right now. We're just looking at a top level view of what's new in Premiere Pro. One thing I will say though, is the bitrate settings is something that you often change depending on if you're rendering out a preview file or a, a final version. So that's where that all lives down there right now. It's in the video toggle down and then the more toggle down. So we'll toggle the video one back up for now and look at the next one, audio. So here's where you can change your audio settings, all pretty standard. You've got other things here, multiplexer, captions, effects, metadata, general, etc. So let's just look at things that you might wanna change. Now this section, if you had captions on your video is where you can decide whether you wanna burn them into your footage or create a sidecar file. You can turn on or off things that you've got for your effects layers for your export. Uh, you know, you've got your metadata options here as well, and then you've got some final general options. And then finally, I'll get out of the way, you've got send to media encoder or export. So again, you can send to media encoder like you would usually do if you wanted to do multiple clips and still work in Premiere Pro while they're rendering, or you can just export directly from Premiere Pro uh, as standard. So there you go, that's a flying overview of what's new in Premiere Pro 2022. Uh, how it might change your workflow and really what the new workspace and layout means for, I guess, the ongoing vision of what Premiere Pro is to Adobe. I think they're moving way more towards uh, new editors, people who have maybe not been in the industry as long as some of us and who are looking for a little bit of guidance on the process. So they've really set things up to, you know, import your media, edit your media and export your media. And then within that, you've also got your assembly, uh, edit, color effects and things like that all set out linearly. And I think they're also looking to push their collaboration tools as well, obviously. They bought Frame.io and they wanna make sure that as many people are using Frame.io as possible. And I think the integration and giving people a couple of free seats to Frame.io is a really good inclusion in this update. And I think, you know, we've all been working from home in one way or another in, you know, the last couple of years. And even if we go back to the office full time or we work half from home, half from the office, it's great to have these uh, remote collaboration tools that make our workflow easy. And so that's great for new editors, uh, beginner editors, intermediate editors, and experts who have been working in the industry for years. So that's my take on the May update for Premiere Pro in 2022. It's on the surface, a really dramatic update, but actually when you start to pick it apart, it's not as scary as it looks. And I actually think for one, that they've really done a great job at refreshing the layout of this and making it feel a little bit more accessible to those who are just getting into editing. Now, if you are looking to learn more about video editing in Premiere Pro, uh, DaVinci Resolve, After Effects, things like that, make sure to get subscribed to the Envato Tuts Plus YouTube channel as we bring content to you daily so that you can continue to learn and upskill your craft. You might be a beginner, you might be intermediate, you might also be an expert who just wants to know, you know, what's changed in Premiere Pro before you update. And if that's the case, we've got something for every level. So make sure you get subscribed right now. Now. now I mentioned at the top of the video about Envato Elements. This video is brought to you by Envato Elements. We couldn't do it without them. So make sure you check out the link in the description below if you're not familiar with Envato Elements. It's a great subscription-based service that gives you access to millions of really, really good high quality digital assets to use in your projects right away. The commercial licensing is so simple and you can cancel the subscription at any time. So there's really no barrier to entry. Jump into the link in the description below and check it out for yourself today. I mentioned video templates. Now, in another video that you'll see on the channel, I've just created an actual music video for a real band using only assets from Envato Elements. And most of those assets were great video templates that people have made for Premiere Pro, After Effects, and DaVinci Resolve that I was able to get in, customize, make my own, and then pull together into an actual music video for a real band. I'm super proud of that project. It was so much fun. So make sure, like I said, you get subscribed to the Envato Tuts Plus YouTube channel so you don't miss more great content like that. And again, check out Envato Elements with the link in the description below right now. So I hope this video has cleared up any apprehension you might have about upgrading to the new update of Premiere Pro in 2022, the May update. I actually love it. A lot of people hate it, but you know, let's go with positivity. I think it's a really good uh, step in the right direction for Adobe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Happy editing.